Hello friends, look who's back. I know it's been a while, uh, I think my last video about two months ago now. Been mad busy lately. Um, but I did want to do a quick video on a topic that's not only been really important to video games, you know, 20, 30 years ago, back in the uh, 8 and 16 bit era, but also it's still really important today. And you can probably tell what it is from the vast array of controllers next to me. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at video game controllers and a few of my favourite ones from um, back in the day really. And uh, really it's going to be concentrating on controllers that I used on the Amiga. And as you can see from the collection I've got next to me, it's mainly going to be a video about joysticks. In particular, I'm going to put two of the leading joysticks from back then um, up against each other, the Competition Pro and the Zipstick. As I do remember at school, it was always a bit of an argument, you know, which one is best. Those two always kind of came out on top and it was, uh, you know, some rabid fanboyism back then. Uh, but we'll also examine a few of the uh, quirkier ones in my collection as well. And uh, I'll actually demo a few of them out and we'll have a look at the pros and cons and I'll kind of try them out and see how well I get on with them these days. All right, I thought we'd start right from the beginning, um, even though this is not an Amiga joystick. This is actually the... Um, first ever joystick that I used and owned at home on my Commodore Plus 4 machine. Now, I've done a video on my Plus 4 before, I think about two summers ago, if you want to check it out my YouTube history, or I'll leave a link below. And uh, this was actually the joystick that got bundled with the system, so I thought I'd just show it off really, because as far as nostalgia goes, this was my first ever joystick, so... I've still got a lot of affection for it, even though the design of it is not really all that amazing, um, even by the standards of what came out at the time, really. And... As I mentioned, it came bundled with the machine, so we've got some Commodore branding there. And I did actually hear a story about the design of this joystick from Bill Hurd. Uh, if I can find the video, I'll link you up with that as well. Now, basically it goes that Bill Hurd was one of the designers of the Commodore 16 and Plus 4. And when he was shown the design of the joystick, I think it was actually done by the guy that did the case design for the systems as well. And he wanted it to look quite futuristic, and you've got to bear in mind this joystick was made back in 1984. So these kind of sleek lines and the black look of it and everything, it did look quite futuristic back then. Although one of the criticisms that Bill Hurd had of this joystick was the very thin neck that you can see if I hold it up to the camera there. It is quite thin in there and that's basically the only thing that's holding this structure in place really. And uh, Bill actually said that looks far too weak, that's going to break straight away. And the designers disagreed with him, so to prove a point what he actually did is he got the original prototype of this that I think was like, you know, twenty thirty thousand dollars worth of prototype and he put loads of force on it and then everybody in the room heard a massive snap and uh, sure enough he'd snapped the neck and the uh, top of the joystick came clean off so i think the uh, later models here the neck's a bit thicker than it originally was in the prototype now there's not really a lot to this joystick really you've got a few um switches underneath here that basically when the stick moves they uh, kind of press down it's quite cheap cheap inside as well it's got some sellotape holding all of them down i'd go inside it um, but i remember it from um opening up other joysticks in the past. You've got to pull all the feet off and everything. It's a bit of a pain to get into. Uh, but basically, you've got one fire button at the top here that is quite mushy. There's not really much feedback from it. And the stick itself, as you can see, it kind of just moves around. There's not really any feedback on that. It is quite... Yeah, it's quite spring-loaded, but it's, um, it is a very simplistic design. Now, the reason you can't actually use this model on the Commodore 64 or the Amiga is because... The connector on it is a mini DIN port, which was unique to the Commodore 16 and Plus 4. Although Commodore did actually release a version of this joystick with the standard 9-pin Atari uh, connector on there, so you could use it on um, machines that had that you know standard connector on back then. Although the uh, model I had here is for the Commodore Plus 4, and uh, as you can see there, there is a couple of pins missing because <laughs> this connector's not all that strong. And uh, back then, you know, repeatedly putting it in and out of your machine, eventually a few of the pins came off. So when that broke, uh, my mum actually took me into a game shop and I replaced it with this model here, the Cheetah 125 Plus, and I've actually still got the uh, original box for it here too, as you can see. Um, I think I got this, I think it was my birthday back in 1989, so my original joystick only lasted about a year or so. And a lot of kids back then had these joysticks because they were really cheap. I think it was about, you know, seven quid or something. So I remember a lot of my friends had these as kind of replacement joysticks when their bundled ones actually, you know, eventually broke down. And I did go through a load of these. I probably went through one of them like every six months. Now, it was cheap and cheerful. I think Cheetah actually used to rebrand these. I'm not sure whether they made the original models, but I think, you know, they might have just put their stickers on. It had a different name in America, I think. But you basically got four fire buttons. Two on the base of the uh, joystick here, 
a trigger one here and uh, on the top of it you've got a fire button on top too now they're not independent they all do the same thing so uh, pressing that button will do the same function as pressing that one it is literally one fire button split into four basically uh, one feature that was quite handy for playing shoot 'em up games back then was the inclusion of an auto fire switch here so rather than having to repeatedly tap it you could just switch that on and then um, a stream of bullets would come out you wouldn't have to keep pressing fire so that was quite useful now originally this joystick did have um, four suction cups on the bottom of it which was quite a common thing with uh, joysticks of this era until manufacturers started to realize that you know we didn't actually clamp them down on the desk to play games kids back then generally held the joystick in your hand and just played them like this and having the suction cups would be quite uncomfortable on your fingers not to mention it was quite unhygienic anyway because I remember what you generally do if you wanted to stick it to the table you'd lick the suction cups and after like you know six or seven of your friends had all done that and you've got you know now it'd be 20 years worth of saliva on the bottom of this joystick which is uh, not really the nicest thing to think about so yeah one of the first things I did after getting the uh, Cheetah 125 Plus was get a pair of my dad's pliers and um, yank out those suction cups on the bottom. Now one interesting feature of joysticks back in this era is that they often had two different joystick adapters on here. You can see there's one grey and one black and I've actually seen these joysticks in um, eBay auctions and the uh, I saw something recently one of the sellers on eBay actually said it's got two independent joystick ports so that stops you having to swap them around you can put one in port one and one in port two which is a big no-no um, you've got every chance of frying your machine by doing that the reason it had two separate plugs as you can see on the box here is because one of them was for a Spectrum Plus 2 which actually had a, a different joystick port even though it was physically compatible um, it wouldn't actually work with most um, standard joysticks of the time so you uh, basically had a second connector that was coloured grey that had a slightly different pinout on there that's the reason that you've got two so yeah, that was the Cheetah 125 Plus not a great joystick in hindsight but it was quite cheap and cheerful uh, then after that we had one of the most famous joysticks of the time, the original Competition Pro. Now, I've actually got a few different models of the Competition Pro. This was the first one that I got. Um, there were actually some clones of this made back in the day, but I think this is actually an original one. I got it from a game shop called Chips, and uh, it is quite a nice design. It's, as you can see, it's heavily influenced by arcade joysticks of the era. And they did come in many different shapes and colors and all sorts. As you can see here, I've actually got a, uh, the competition pro that's got a black joystick on it as well so it was really just look at the drawer and I think you know depending on what they had in stock at the time and also the logos are slightly different on the base of them as well this one's got quite a big logo on it and that one's a bit smaller I think this one's actually a later design though even though I bought this one first I think this one hails from uh, about 1983-84 this is probably more I think late 80s the only problem is um, these joysticks actually used a rubber neck so this one here as you can hear, it's dried up and it's really stiff to use. This one here um, wasn't affected all that much by that. It still moves quite freely. Although the joystick fire buttons on them I always find a little bit flimsy. Now, these joysticks were actually released again. Um, about 2009 actually, there was a USB version of them that was completely micro-switched. And it was a lot nicer to play with and you had um, a couple of extra buttons here as well. And actually on the uh, USB version of the Competition Pro, uh, these were all independent fire buttons, so you could actually use them for four different functions, which wasn't the case with the original models. And it also came with a fire button, uh, an auto fire switch on there too. The only problem with the uh, USB version of these joysticks is they suffer a bit of input lag. Um, as you can see, mine's a USB model. And I think they've got really poor USB interface chips inside. So if you've got one of these and you find yourself... Um, being really bad at games you remember being a lot better at back in the day it could be because there is actually about half a millisecond or so or half a second of that lag introduced by this joystick although they did actually release this exact model with a standard 9 pin um, adapter so you can plug it into old school systems as well which is a lot better so we're going to have a few games with the Competition Pro in a bit and I'll uh, see how I get on with that uh, also there was a weird little joystick that I picked up, also made by Cheetah, who did the 125 before. Now, this thing is called the Bug. It's got an auto fire switch here as well. The reason it was called the Bug is because, basically, if you look at it, it looks a bit like two beady eyes on an insect. And uh, it's got a very small 
quite a loose joystick at the top of it here. And the one thing with this is, I, I remember seeing this first on Games Master on TV, a gaming show here in the UK. And uh, they were kind of raving about how great it was. I never really understood how you meant to hold it, though. Some of my friends held it in one hand and uh, used the fire buttons like that and then kind of just clicked the stick around. A few of us kind of did that and just kind of held it and loosely in the fingers. It's a bit of a weird stick, and I'll have a few games with that and kind of see which one, which kind of game type works best with that joystick. Uh, also, I play quite a lot of games with the um, Competition Pro CD32 joypad as well. Now, I must admit for the Amiga and uh, Commodore games in general, I'm much more a fan of using joysticks because I think a lot of them back then were actually designed to be played with joysticks. Racing games, for example, often had um, up to accelerate. A lot of platformers you used up to uh, make your character jump, which is not ideal with a control pad otherwise, you know. You try and do diagonals and all that, it's a bit awkward. Ideally, with a, uh, a joypad, you want you know, one of the fire buttons to be the jump button and then use um, the directional pad to control your character. So there was a few examples where, you know, I've got friends that still swear by using joypads over joysticks, even on the Amiga and the Commodore Plus 4 and uh, 64. So uh, it's nice to have an option when I have friends around who prefer that. I think my all-time favourite joystick, though, would have to be this bad boy, the Zip Stick, which, um, as you can see from the design, it did borrow very heavily from the Competition Pro. You've got the logo there on the... Uh, on the base of the joystick and this one is completely micro switched so it's got a nice click to it which I always liked and uh, the fire buttons feel they've got a nice depth to them they're nice and responsive as well and it's just a quite loose feeling pleasant joystick in the hand so I will play a few games with that in a bit and a joystick that has kind of got a bit of a divided opinion uh, these days but I also did think it was actually quite a good stick um, is this baby here the cruiser which is definitely the most Colourful joystick in my collection. Now, I did actually use this as my main joystick for about two or three years back then. And uh, the fire buttons on it are really nice. They've got proper kind of spring-loaded mechanism on them. They feel like arcade buttons, they're really good. And the stick here, it could have a bit more of a... Uh, a bit more of feedback about it. I mean, it does click a bit if you hear it. And this is actually micro-switched inside. They're kind of... some micro-switches held on um, by some little metal uh, little plastic posts inside it. I do know that because I've repaired it in the past. One of the things that used to happen quite regularly is you actually snap the little posts inside and then the uh, the micro switches that come away from it. So I went through a few of these back then. One nice feature of this joystick though, even though it's a little bit stiff to control, is you can actually, if I can get this moving, it's probably been about 20 years since I moved it around, you can um, basically change the slackness of the joystick here by changing this um, the neck of it here, which uh, is completely seized up on mine. So yeah, I don't think it's going to go. Uh, but basically you could move that around and then that will control just how stiff the uh, neck of the jo joystick was really. As some people prefer quite a tight stick, I actually quite like a bit of movement in mine, so I always had it on the loosest setting really. And uh, as I mentioned before, we've got the suction cups on here that I didn't get around to taking off with the pliers, but you know, you can clamp it down to your desk and use it that way and it would generally come loose in games when you put a bit of pressure on it so yeah that's a cruiser joystick they did make this in a few different colors as well and i think this model hails from about 1987 as you can tell by those kind of you know very vibrant like 80s colors so what i'll do is i'll fire the amiga up and um i'll try a few of these joysticks out and we'll see how we get on with them in a few games right then the first game we're going to try is a platform game on the amiga that was quite famous back in the day this one's called zool um, really, it was kind of meant to be one of the uh, challenges to Sonic the Hedgehog, although not as good. So I'm going to try the uh, the bug joystick on this one, just because it's a bit weird, and I thought it might be quite cool to try to try to play a platform game with this. So as I mentioned before, I'm still not exactly sure how you hold it. So let's give it a whirl. All right, so there's Zool. Now we'll try um, let's try the one-handed method. Okay, it's a bit weird. Yeah, not a big fan of that. Let's try it with uh, two hands. Which, doing it this way, it feels like the stick's a bit too small, though, to grip properly. I'm sure you're just meant to kind of hit it around with your hand. Yeah, I must say, not really feeling this joystick for this game. Get up there. It kind of feels like it works quite quite nicely in the palm of your hand. 
but the accuracy is not all that amazing on it. And I know this joystick does often get good reviews, so if I am holding it wrong, <laughs> is it meant to be a one-handed stick? Um, please leave some feedback, because I think it's quite a cool looking device, but um, yeah, it didn't work all that well in platformers. So tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll give it a go in a racing game, see how we get on with that. And I thought we'd play one of the legendary Amiga racing games. You know, I actually had a friend when I was at school who had a uh, 386 PC. When he came round and I played Lotus 2, this introduction music blew his mind. He was stood there with his mouth open. Still sounds pretty catchy today. Um, so tell you what, we're going to have a go at Lotus 2 using the bug joystick, see kind of how it copes with a completely different type of game. So we'll do auto gears. It's quite nice to flick it around though, it's pretty slack. Right, so I think you hold down fire to uh, accelerate if I set it up properly. Yeah, which is a bit easier. So now with a game like this where you haven't got to make such kind of frequent movements, or the kind of more slight movements you make, this actually works quite well. As you can see I'm taking the corners there with no problems really. Yeah, using it in two hands like this. Um, Actually feels really comfortable when playing a racing game. And even like drifting around corners there and easing off on the acceleration a bit. Bang. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with the performance of the bug on uh, on racing games so far. Um, so we'll test out another joystick now. Next up, I'm going to try out the Cheetah 125 Plus, which um, is actually a joystick that gets some pretty bad reviews on the forums and stuff these days. As I mentioned before, it's quite a cheap one. And uh, I'm going to play Captain Planet, that was one of the first Amiga games I played. And uh, it's also a game that gets a bit of stick, but that, you know, to me this is quite a nostalgic game. It came with my Cartoon Classics pack. Um, that I got for Christmas when I was little, so I've always quite liked this game. So I've got some nice click on the fire button there, and it is actually quite easy to move around. Um, yeah, the diagonals are quite easy to hit as well on it. It's a big joystick, as you can see. It feels massive compared to the, uh, the bug I had in my hand a minute ago. I'm sure there will be some innuendo left in the, on the uh, comments of this video, no doubt. Nope. It's been a while since I played this. I think for platformers though, this is actually a pretty easy stick to play with. Yeah, I mean, I know it does get some um, bad comments on the forums and stuff, as I mentioned, although you know, I'm hitting every jump that I'm trying to make here. I've, I haven't got any missed instructions from the joystick. It's Considering it was only a budget stick back when I got it, I think it actually plays pretty well. Now because the Cheetah 125 is one of the uh, few Amiga joysticks I've got with an um, auto fire button, I thought we'd load up one of the best Amiga shoot em ups in my opinion, Dulux Gallagher. Now, I must admit trying to use it with manual fire doesn't feel all that great on this button, so we'll put the auto fire on. And even though there are some gaps in the fire, it's uh, not performing all that badly. I must say I did find it easier to play the uh, the platform game than I am the shoot 'em up with this joystick here. See, I missed quite a lot there. The the auto fire actually seems to have some kind of a timing break in it. Like it'll fire a burst of shots and then you'll get a uh, a pause for a second. Maybe that's to avoid overloading certain computers input chips maybe which could be by design but yeah it doesn't make it all that accurate if I'm honest so so far I'm finding the 125 pretty decent for um, platformers but yeah for a shoot 'em up it's uh, leaves a bit to be desired really 
Okay, next up we'll give the um, cruiser joystick a try out on a platform game. Um, I do remember this is actually pretty decent on platformers, if I remember correctly. So we're going to try out James Pond 2 Robocod, that was one of my favourite Amiga platformers when I was a kid. And I did mention before that there is different um, settings on here for the slackness of the stick, depending on how tight you want it. Although it has seized up on mine, it won't seem to move anymore. I've got it on the loosest setting, which still feels pretty tight, actually. Um, but as you can see by the movement on the screen, it's, you know, quite easy to move and quite responsive. Um, I think you press fire to extend James Pond. And there was actually a cheat in this game. You collected these items in a certain order. Um, and that would give you invincibility and level skips. If I remember rightly, I think it was cake, hammer, earth. Yes, it's about a cheat, I think. So we'll try to get into a level. I'm actually finding it quite nice to play this game with um, with the cruiser. Pretty comfy in your hand, even though we've got the suction pads on the bottom still. Um, and I'm probably getting, you know, 20 year old saliva over my fingers now. Nice. It is actually quite easy to play this game with. Yeah, I think if you get into a few sticky situations in games like that, <laughs> it's quite handy to have a joystick that reacts really quickly. And yeah, I'd say this one, you know, it's got a good reaction time on it. Um, even though I've got something there I shouldn't have got. Eat some hamburgers to make me healthy. How attitudes were different back in the 90s. It'd be like a banana in a game today, wouldn't it? I love this game, brilliant. Yes, I've got to say, I'm really impressed with the cruiser on a uh, on a platform game. Level one done. All right, next up, we'll have a uh, quick break from the joysticks, and we'll try out the Competition Pro uh, CD32 Joypad, which, as you can see, is quite heavily inspired by the uh, Sega Mega Drive pad, which I may actually try out as well, uh, just because I know a lot of people used to play Amiga games with that. Now, I'm going to try another favourite game of mine from back then, um, Golden Axe, which was a, uh, a famous arcade beat-em-up. The Amiga port was actually pretty de decent as well. So we're going to a one-player game. As you can see here, the, uh, the D-pad is actually pretty loose. I'm not sure whether it was always like that or whether... Mine's kind of, you know, got a bit slack over time, but yeah, it is a bit off-putting, actually. So I expect this to be pretty difficult to play. Yeah, as I expected. It's not the easiest to control, actually, with this. Yeah, the movements are pretty inaccurate. I'm trying to jump, and I'm instead firing. You press up and fire to jump, I believe, but... It's not having much effect on here. I don't use my magic. Actually, this is quite interesting. It seemed to recognise a different button on the joypad then. So I fired my magic by using the blue button here. And I've turned the music off with uh, that one. There you go. So jump is up and fire, but you've really got to time it. Exactly. That is quite interesting that this game was programmed to use a two button joystick. So it's a lot easier than reaching down to the keyboard to press a number key. Yeah, I'm not doing very well with this at all. The responsiveness of it isn't great though. It feels like you're doing something then it's reacting like a second later. Yeah, I'm not feeling the uh, Competition Pro control pad on our beat em up games, I've got to say. We'll move on. One game I thought might fare slightly better is um, Gloom Deluxe, as I think this actually had inbuilt support for the CD32 controller. Um, if you're not familiar with this game, this is actually a first person shooter for the Amiga. So yeah, we can change that to CD32 Pad 1, so... We'll try it on a game that it was um, designed to be used with. Let's try changing the, uh, the settings here, put the window size up a bit. So 
see how we do with that. Oh yeah, it is faring a lot better on this game. I still think, you know, first person shooter is going to be easier with uh, the mouse and keyboard, but... Although I am still getting when I'm trying to walk forward. It is kind of going off to the sides quite easily. I think it might be because of this wobbly D-pad. I'm not sure, like I said, whether it was originally like that or whether it's just come loose over time. I always love the sound effects in this game. Where the bodies just squelched and blew apart. Let's find some more aggro skinheads. Oh, and that was it, I think. There we go, level one done. Which, um, I've got to say, definitely fared better than it did with the beat em up game, but still, you know, I thought the accuracy was a bit all over the place with it. Okay, we're going to go on to the uh, one of the big boys now, the Competition Pro joystick. And I thought because it is a joystick that's kind of built for action, um, we try out Micro Machines. It's kind of a combination of, um, it's really a top-down racing game, but there's a bit of, you know, shooting and stuff involved in it as well. So, let's see how we get on. I've got to say, on this particular model of Competition Pro I've got, um, the fire buttons do feel a little bit mushy in it. Let's just have a head-to-head. Uh, -head. Yeah, it's fire to go forward. So I'm the, uh, the red boat playing against the computer, which is the purple one. I take the lead. I've got to say, yeah, it does feel really accurate. And movement very, very easy with this stick as well. I'm not going anywhere that I don't want to be. So I did probably start one of the most most boring courses in the game. So I've got to say, pretty impressed with that for a uh, for a top-down racer. It worked really well. So in a game like this, you know, you you've got tight corners. You want movements to react really quickly. You want the joystick to send your character where you want to be. I think that fell off the table. But yeah, I've got to say, you know, yeah, really impressed with the competition pro for this kind of game. And we'll try now with another infamous Amiga title, um, Chaos Engine, which was, again, another really fast-paced uh, game where you've got to have your wits about you, um, enemies coming from all different directions, and you really do need a really um, a joystick that's really going to keep up with your gameplay. So I'm this character here. The other one's controlled by the computer. And there's a lot of diagonal shooting in this game as well, so it's quite important that your uh, the stick faces you the way that you need to be, and you need to move away from bullets quite rapidly as well. So I must say, yeah, very impressed with the Competition Pro. I can see why it's got the reputation it has. My character's facing the way I want him to really rapidly. I'm not facing the wrong way by accident or anything. And finally, let's have a go at my um, my favourite joystick before doing this test. And I've got a feeling probably still will be. Um, no qualms about it, I am biased. I do love the zip stick. It's been one of my favourite joysticks since I was a kid. And uh, I've actually got two of them here, as you can see. So let's have a go at a platform game with it. Um, the brilliant Fire and Ice, always a fan of this. I like the fact that the the stick is just so slack to move around, but you know it's really tight. It kind of jumps back into place really quickly because of those um, micro switches in there, and the clicking's nice as well. A few of the joysticks I've shown in this video have been micro switch, but I like the type that are used in this joystick. 
shouldn't have died there, come on. I'd frozen him. And again, it's another fast-paced platform game, one where you need to have, you know, instant reaction times and you can't have a joystick that's going to let you down on that. I'm a bit rusty. I've got to say, um, for these kind of games in particular, I've always liked the, the zip stick for platform games. I think that's where it really comes into its own, really. The movement on it is just really nippy. So yeah, really impressed with the Zipstick on a platform game. Okay, now for the final test of the um, Zipstick, I thought we'd have uh, another go at Lotus, um, a racing game. This time gone for the final in the series, Lotus 3 The Ultimate Challenge. Now I do have quite a um, specific reason for wanting to try out the Zipstick again on a racing game. It's because I do recall that it wasn't all, actually all that comfortable to play um, races with this joystick for some reason. So we'll give it another go and see how I fare with it. Get a good soundtrack going. And here we go. Now I did mention before I found the, uh, the bug actually surprisingly comfortable to play racing games with, so... Um, we're doing alright so far with this. Gotta say, yeah, the directions, as in, you know, the platform game, is very responsive, very accurate. Even a slight little nudge of the joystick and your, uh, your car's moving where you want it to be. Yeah, the reaction time's very good. Now, I've got to say, though, I think the thing that makes it slightly uncomfortable to play with when you're doing racing games, as I'm feeling it already, is that the fact you've got to constantly hold the fire button down to go forward, and because the uh, the base of this joystick is quite thick, um, and also there's some quite rugged sharp bits on the bottom here, as uh, there's never any suction cups on this joystick. Instead, there's kind of um, a place where maybe some could go, but it's basically some plastic circles on the bottom that are quite rugged on your fingers. When you've got it kept in place for a certain amount of time like this, and you're clamping down on the fire button and holding the base of the joystick as well, your hand's kind of in this kind of cramped position, so I'm feeling a bit of muscle pain actually in my um, thumb and kind of the top of my hand here as well. But I do remember playing with, with this joystick quite a lot when I was a kid in racing games and um, finding it quite comfortable then, so maybe it's just a sign of, you know, growing up and your muscles change and uh, probably not used to uh, holding it anymore either, so. Yeah, but even from playing like, you know, a minute or two of this already, I'm feeling some uh, discomfort here in my left hand. And I can imagine after a, um, a full hour or two intensive gameplay on this, you'd be uh, being crippling agony in your hand after a bit. So I've got to say, love the zip stick for uh, platform games and I uh, beat them up. It's amazing for that, but not so comfortable in games like this where you've constantly got to hold down the fire button, I've got to say. So that has been a completely unscientific um, comparison of joysticks based in no foundation apart from my own personal opinions and other will be people that will comment on the video going or you know you should have done it this way you should have played the same two games all the way through that made a pretty boring video to be fair um, really it was just to kind of you know an excuse to play some Amiga games on camera and uh, try out a few of my old school controllers and kind of see which ones felt best in different situations are you the same maybe you've got a different joystick or a different controller 
that works best for you on different kind of games do you always play like a racing game with a competition pro um maybe you've got a zip stick that you only use for platformers i'd love to know uh, maybe you've got an all-time favorite that you know you just can't part with you've always got to have this joystick or controller uh leave a comment in the video description below also be interested to find out your thoughts on um using joy pads or joysticks for old school systems as well as i know that is quite a uh, fierce debate on a lot of the forums let me know your thoughts also follow me on twitter check out the blog at kookytech.net add us on facebook all of that you'll find in the video description below and hopefully it won't be too long till i see you again